Hey guys, Combatant5 here. And uh, so today I was looking on Hoggett and I noticed that a couple, or that one or two guys were having issues with air to air guns employment um, with the DCS F 18C. Thought I'd take a second and just kind of provide some tips for success that I've found working with the jet. Um, so I just jumped into the instant action mission against the hardest, in my opinion, um, opponent that the Hornet can find or can meet, uh, MiG-29. Um, I've found that the MiG-29 and the Hornet are very, very close on turn capability, and so this is pretty much a good sort of way to show what I'm talking about here. So I'll go ahead and put my, bring my guns up here, and so now we're in gun act mode, and I'll wait for until we get an acquisition. Okay, so on the inside of the circle, you can see this in line on, that's kind of uh, perpendicular to the, in, or to the outline of the circle. That's going to be our range line. On the outside right here, we've got our maximum gun range, or at least maximum effective range for our gun in air to air. So what we'll want to do is wait until this line is either inside of or lined up with this line right here. I usually wait until I'm inside of it, just barely. Um, we've also got our closure rate and then our range to the target. Down here we've got the uh, readout gun that tells us what air-to-air -air weapon we have selected. And we have 578 rounds left for our gun. So we're coming in here head-to-head -head at 25,000 feet. And I'm not going to engage the guy right now. I'm going to actually turn with him and show you guys what I'm talking about. So we'll get to the merge and merged. So you can see here we're kind of going head to head. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reverse the turn on him. Okay. So now we are behind him, for the most part. We'll get behind him here as we come out. Okay, so once we get acquisition on him, I'll kind of pause and start talking you through what I've noticed. Okay, so right now we're really close. We're at about 1,600 feet. We've got a 50 knot closure rate. There's our pipper, there's the target, right there in the middle of the TD box. They're kind of superimposed right now. I'm actually not going to engage this way. What I'm going to show you first is I'm going to actually pull him behind, or I'm going to put my pipper on him and pull the trigger, and we'll notice that my rounds kind of fall short a little bit. So right now I'm going to pull the pipper into the target and pull the trigger. Now what's happening there is he's flying through my pipper. Obviously right there it's kind of hard to miss. So what I've found works really well is actually to put the target behind the pipper and let him fly through it. And so that's what I'm going to do on this one. So I've got him right in front of me. I'm a little slow here so I'm going to have a little bit of trouble getting my pipper out in front. Got some good closure rate though and I'm putting it out in front. And you can see right there, I hit him. And that, what I did there is I essentially put him in front, or put the pipper just in front of the TD box and then pulled the trigger. And so what I'm looking to do is actually let him fly through my stream of bullets. And as he passes through that, I'm bound to get a hit at least once. Now, if my hit has no effect, I'll come up, or I'll keep following him, I'll make my pass. I'll turn back in on him and I'll make another pass. And I'll do that and then hopefully that time I get a hit. If I don't, I'll continue. So that's kind of the idea that I wanted to pass along is try letting the, or try rather than just putting the pipper on the target, put the pipper in front of him and then pull the trigger, start the stream and let him, or let him fly through the stream of rounds. Because you can see I've only used roughly 60 rounds and I've got a dead target. So 
Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to stick them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching.